for video three, we're going to be taking a look at how the homework screen uh, works and making some suggestions on how you approach your homework. So remember that all the MTEs are set up the same. I'll go into MTE 1 again and I'll just pick a unit. So today we're going to take a look at button 3 which is assigned homework. When you click on the buttons it does not automatically pull up the specific homework assignment but it pulls up the homework list. And so you just have one more click if we uh, were in unit 1.1 I would click on Unit 1.1 Homework again. If you are not eligible for the homework assignment, a message like this will come up. And this is saying that I have not received an 80 on my Unit 1.1 reading quiz. So my homework, it would not open, and I need to go back and do the uh, guided notebook, the e-text, and the reading quiz before I click on the homework. So, so if you get this message, that's what it means. I'm going to sneak in the back door and we're going to still take a look at the homework. This homework has 15 questions. The little green symbols here indicate that those questions have video lectures available to go with them. First let me explain how the homework scoring works. If you notice across the top are the, the problems. The single arrow goes pro, uh, question by question. The double arrow goes to the next page. There are no checks or X's because we haven't done any problems yet. If I do the first problem, and so I will quickly put my answer in, and then I go to the bottom and I check answer. If it is correct, it will tell me and I can move on. Now this was a two-part question, so I'm going to put in my denominator. I'm going to check my answer and it says I was correct. Now if you'll notice, up on the number one, I have a little check mark. I have successfully completed number one, and now my score has gone up almost seven points because I got one out of the 15 questions right. So as you get the problems right, they will be checked off. Now let's say we get to number two, and we don't know the answer to number two, and I'm going to get it wrong. And it tells me, sorry that's not correct, the top number is the numerator. Well, I ignore that and I say that 2 is my numerator. Again, I'm trying to get the question wrong. Notice there is still nothing up on the number 2, even though I have now gotten it wrong twice. So I'm going to do one more. Maybe I say it's 12. Notice the button here has now changed to final check and I click on that and it tells me I was wrong and it now gives me the correct answer. When I click on done, so we technically have to finish this problem. I'm going to do it quickly by just entering the same thing twice. So I'm getting this problem completely wrong. Not all problems have two parts. Okay, so now look what happens to the number two. It has an X beside it. So now I still only have a score of one out of 15. Well, what if I get a couple wrong? Does that mean that I can't get a 90? That is not the case. When you get an answer wrong after three tries, you can click on similar exercise down below. Notice we got a different problem of the same type. Now I'm going to put my answers in and get them right. And watch what happens to the X and to my score. The X became a check and the score went up to 2 out of 15 correct. So for each problem, you get three attempts to enter the answer to the question. And then when you get, if you get it wrong after three attempts, then you may ask for a similar exercise and with the opportunity to get it right again. So you may just go in and out of the homework and work on each problem working to get it right. Please don't turn it into a guessing game. Turn it into getting the help you need in order to understand that concept. Now there are many ways to get help. There's the help you can get within the program, and I'm getting ready to go over that. There is your instructor who is there to help you during class time and via communication outside of class. And we have our tutoring resources, both our online tutoring and our in-house uh, math labs and tutoring center workshops, etc. So there is a lot of help available. You just have to take the time to get it. 
let's talk about the buttons over here that can help you. There are two types of help, and the key thing here is not to become dependent on these buttons, kind of like the easy button in the commercial. You can use Help Me Solve It to understand, but if you use Help Me Solve It to mimic, then you're not learning the material. And so always make sure that you can do the problems completely on your own before you declare yourself that you understand. When you get to your quizzes and your final exams, you don't have these buttons anymore, and so therefore you'll be on your own and, and the knowledge that you have. The Help Me Solve This button is kind of like a computer-based teacher. It will give you little bits of information, and along the way, it will ask you questions. So the question it's asking right now is not the original problem, it's a kind of an intermediate step. It wants to know how many equal parts is the figure divided in. So I'm going to put six and they say yes. So it's going to take me to the next step. How many equal parts um, are in the shaded, are shaded? And so I'm going to put four. And now it asks me, based on what the reading was there, that I have the numerator over the denominator, so I'm going to put in four over six and check my answer. And, and so I can close. Now remember that was four out of six. Watch what happens to, so these two shapes match. Watch what happened when I close. All of a sudden it became a different figure because it helped me solve my problem, so it's going to make me do a different one. Now when I view an example, that's a little bit different. It's not quite as interactive. It is going to talk you through the problem and give you the answers itself and provide the help that way. The less interactive it is, the less you're going to get out of it. So while view an example might allow you to copy the concept, it's not going to help as much with understanding. View example though can be an excellent tool for clarifying the directions. If it asks for something and it's unclear whether it wants it in a mixed number or improper, by looking at view an example, you can see what type of form the final answer is taking. So there, sometimes the view an example is good to clarify uh, the question. The other buttons here are the textbook button, which will take you to the exact pages in the e-text where this information is located. The connect to the tutor button is a button that allows you 30 minutes of free online tutoring through smart thinking, separate from what Germana gives you, but then if you want more than that, you would be told that it, it's going to cost you money. Remember that you get uh, free tutoring through the Tutoring Center uh, for Smart Thinking. So do not pay for a tutor, but you certainly can use your 30 minutes of tutoring there. Ask My Instructor is going to give you the opportunity to send an email to your instructor and it will automatically put the question into the email. So you do not need to try to type the question. You could just simply type what your answer was or what you tried and you don't understand why it's wrong, whatever message you're trying to ask. Try to give your teacher as much detail as possible so that they can help you. You are able to print your homework assignments and the same numbers will be in the problem when you come back. So it's not gonna change numbers every time you log in. So by clicking on print the homework assignment, you can actually print the entire assignment if that's something you prefer to do. The other help button that might show up is this video button. And it, when you watched uh, orientation video two, we looked at what the video button gave us, but it will show up on problems that has direct help with a video. So that will be somebody teaching you a little bit of information. So you have all of these uh, different ways to get help right within your course, in addition to contacting your instructor or the tutoring center. I will point out over to the left the toolbar for entering answers. So if I wanted to enter a fraction, I could simply use my slash underneath the question mark and type four slash five and it will convert it. Or 
I can click on the button that looks like a fraction and then fill in the blue boxes. There is a calculator available as well. Let me switch to a homework that is in an area that is allowed the calculator because MTE, MTE1 does not allow the use of the calculator. Um, let me run through that. MTE1 is no calculator. MTE2 and 3 are no calculator for the first half and calculator for the second half. And MTE4 uh, and up allows a scientific or basic calculator for the course. And it is very similar to the calculator that is in your Windows uh, accessories, but I'll show you what that looks like. It shows up right here as calculator, and it looks just like a basic calculator. When you get in MTE8 or places like that where you're dealing with powers, for your homework, you would probably want to use your Windows accessory uh, calculator option. And that scientific calculator, these buttons here, are the ones that will be available on your quiz. So if you need more buttons, like especially I know MTE8 needs additional buttons, uh, use your Windows calculator under Programs Accessories, and when it's time for the quiz or the exam, the, the scientific calculator with the extra buttons will be available to you um, while you're in a lockdown browser that doesn't allow you to go to the uh, Windows calculator. So calculator is available in the course when it's acceptable for you to use it. So the key is that as you're doing homework that you become comfortable with the content so that when you go to take your quizzes, you'll see that the screen is a bit different. And again, it's giving me the prereq error. And so notice that there are no buttons now. And so all of those support buttons are gone. The other thing that's important to remember when doing your quizzes is while it's not against the rules to reference your notes, the quizzes are preparation for you for the final exam. And if you are dependent on your notes during quiz time, you are not going to be successful on your final exam. And you have to pass your final exam to pass the course. So use the quiz as the opportunity to test do you really know the information. It doesn't do you any good to just use your notes to get you through and then you go to the final and you're unable to do it on your own. So that's a very important piece. So as you go through homework, your goal is to get at least a 90 and for you to get help when you need it and to use your homework to prepare you for the quiz but to try to do the quizzes without notes or homework reference. I hope this has been helpful. Good luck working on your course.